Okay, welcome everybody. So I want to formally state what is called the QR factorization theorem now that we've seen some examples of this in practice. And then we're going to apply this QR factorization to some nice applications dealing with linear regression. That's what's going to come next. So let me first state this theorem. So if A is an M by N matrix, it does not need to be a square matrix. But what we do need is all of the columns of matrix A. There are N different columns of matrix A that they are all linearly independent columns. If that is the case, then A can be factored into a product of two matrices, Q times R, where the matrix Q we form um, from a orthonormal basis for the column space of matrix A. And then the matrix R is an upper triangular N by N, so it's going to be a square N by N matrix which has all zeros below the main diagonal, has positive entries along the main diagonal, and then may have some positive or some negative entries or zero entries um, above the main diagonal. And this is what is called the QR factorization. And this is gonna be really nice. You might be itching to see why we're spending time with this process of finding orthonormal bases. It's gonna save us tons of time and tons of computations when we start to work with more complicated modeling in regression analysis, for example, when we're doing data science. So before we look at those applications, I just want to summarize the process. If you were given a matrix A, how would you go through the steps to find the product, the matrices Q and R, so that when we multiply those two matrices back together, we get the matrix A that we started with. So I'm gonna outline those steps on the next slide. Okay, so let's go through the steps for this QR factorization. And to illustrate this process, let's consider the four by three matrix A, whose first column is one, 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 whose second column is zero, one, 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 and third column is zero, zero, one, one. So we don't have to do much convincing, I hope, to um, be sure that these three vectors are all linearly independent. So the column space for matrix A is going to be spanned by these three column vectors. These vectors, however, are not orthogonal to each other, and none of them are unit vectors. So if we're going to use this um, process of QR factorization, Step one is to find an orthogonal basis using the Gram-Schmidt process um, for the column space of matrix A. Once we have an orthogonal basis for that column space, then we can normalize each of the vectors in that basis to find an orthonormal basis that we're going to use to construct the matrix Q. And then the matrix R we get by taking the product of Q transpose and the matrix A that we started with. So I am not going to go through all of the calculations by hand. Um, there is a link in the description of this video to a Google Colab document where there's some Python code that goes through these calculations. But the first step would be finding an orthogonal basis um, using the Gram-Schmidt process. So we would pick the first vector would be 1, 1, 1, 1. And then going through the rest of that Gram-Schmidt process, you can verify that the next vector in the basis would be the vector minus 3 fourths, 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 1 fourth. These two vectors, uh, the first and second vector, are orthogonal to each other. And then the third vector um, is 0, minus 2 thirds, 1 third, 1 third. And you can check that the first vector and V3 are orthogonal to each other. V2 and V3 are orthogonal to each other. So now we have an orthogonal basis for the column space. Uh, when we set up the matrix Q, then we want to normalize each of these vectors so that the columns of matrix Q, in addition to being orthogonal to each other, they all have unit length 1. So for example, this first vector in our orthogonal basis, it has magnitude two. So we divide by each of these component, each of these entries by its magnitude two, 
and we get the vector one half, one half, one half, one half. So now we have a unit vector. And we do the same for the next two vectors in our orthogonal basis. Uh, so the next column of matrix Q is gonna be what I get when I normalize the second, uh, the second orthogonal basis vector. So that's minus three over the square root of 12, one over the square root of 12, one over the square root of 12, one over the square root of 12. And then we normalize the last uh, vector in our orthogonal basis um, that gives me the last column of matrix Q, which is 0, minus 2 over the square root of 6, 1 over the square root of 6, 1 over the square root of 6. So now we've got the matrix Q, and that's really the only work that we need to do, or the more complicated work. Once I've got matrix Q, I find matrix R by taking the transpose of Q, so that I've got down below. I change interchange rows and columns. And I multiply this by the matrix A that we started with. And calculating that product, you can verify we wind up with the 3 by 3 upper triangular matrix, um, where the first row is 2, 3 halves, 1. The second row is 0, 3 over the square root of 12, 2 over the square root of 12. And the third row is 0, 0, 2 over the square root of 6. So this is upper triangular. All of the entries below the main diagonal are zeros. All of the entries on the main diagonal happen to be positive. Um, the other entries that are above the main diagonal, these may be negative or they may be positive. We've done an example where some of those entries were negative, but certainly all of the entries along the main diagonal are gonna be positive. So here are the steps for uh, finding the QR factorization for a matrix A um, that we start with a matrix whose columns are all linearly independent from each other.